Shalom. We're continuing in our series of the Hebrew alphabet. Letter by letter, we're learning two letters at a time. If you have not already gotten your font chart, you can click the link below. Our first letter for today is the Tet. You'll find it is the ninth character. It has a number value of nine, and its picture meaning is either a basket or a snake, the idea of surrounding something. Before we go on, we want to compare the Tet to another letter that we learned previously, and that is the Mem. So in the right-hand column, you see three Mems of three different fonts. You see their opening is at the bottom. In the left-hand column, you have the same fonts with the Tet, and their opening is at the top. Tet, top. The second letter we're learning today is the Bet, and it has a number value of two. Its picture meaning is a house. Again, we want to compare the bet to another letter that we learned earlier, which is the kaf. So you can see that the bet has a little back porch that slides off the line on the bottom in each case. The kaf just goes around and around and around. The bet is also a doggish letter, so when the doggish is in it, remember the dot will stop the air. It'll make this sound, b, b, b. It's got a belly button. If it has no doggish, then the sound will be a v, as in vest or victory, and it will make a v sound. The v sound can be continuous. The b, the, the doggish stops the air, b. So we're coming down to the last few letters to learn, and in order to spell this word, we needed to insert one letter, an o vowel sound. And this word you probably know is tov. Tov means good. It's used as both a noun and as a verb to make something good. In Genesis 1-4, And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. In Genesis 6-2, That the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, tov, and they took them wives of all which they chose. In Exodus 2-2, and the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. Was he behaving well? No, he's a tiny baby. But there was something about him that she found to be good. In Ruth 3.13, Harry this night, and it shall be in the morning, that if he will perform unto you the part of a kinsman, well. Or we might say, good, that'll be a good thing. Let him do the kinsman's part. But if he will not do the part of a kinsman to you, then will I do the part of a kinsman to you. As Jehovah lives, lie down until morning. This is Boaz after Ruth has wakened him at night. 1 Samuel 2.26 And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with Jehovah and also with men. In 1 Samuel 15.22 we see a comparative form. And Samuel said, as Jehovah is great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of Jehovah, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. In Second Samuel 3.36, And all the people took notice of it, and it pleased them, and whatsoever the king did pleased all the people. It was good in their sight. Esther 1.10 on the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Bista, Harbona, Bikta, and Abakta, Zetar, and Karkas, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus, the king. He was feeling pretty good. He'd been having a party for a long time. Psalm 133, 2. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. Here's another use of toe, but will give us a chance to explore a funny translation. In Hosea 14:2, take with you words and turn to Jehovah. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. Tove, receive us well. So we will render the calves of our lips. Now we know that uh, as a body part, calves are actually at the bottom of your leg in the back. And so what exactly does this mean, the calves of our lips? You can see the word highlighted uh, in, in a purple color. It is parim. Hey, you can read that. Super. So what we see here is the word for bull is par. 
and the plural of that will be a masculine plural, parim. The word for cow is feminine, coming from the masculine par. It is para, and the plural is parot. And we have another word that has the same root, pre, and all these have to do with fruitfulness. We want our cows and bulls to be fruitful. And the plural of fruit is perot. In the modern spelling, it will have an extra yud so that you can see the difference between the cows, the female cows, and the fruit. But if we look in the Septuagint, in Hosea 14.2, you see the word highlighted there is karpon, which means fruit. And so it seems like the scripture in Hosea is referring to the fruit of our lips. And some of the translations actually say that. The other explanations, is they kind of stretch it out and say, well, the calves are sacrifices. So it's talking about the sacrifices of our lips in, a, in an allegorical sense. I've given you the word also from Galatians 5.22, and you know it's about the fruit of the spirit. That is also karpos. Why is one karpos and one karpon? Because they're in two different cases. Now, I did wonder if the word good in English was related to the word God, and it's generally agreed that it was not, but there is this one interesting connection. The word gospel originally from the Old English was God spell, and the spelling part has to do with good tidings, a good story, and the God there does come from the word good. As we see from the etymology website, the first element of the Old English word originally had a long O, uh, like good story, but it shifted under mistaken association with God, as if it was a God story, that is the history of Christ. From the OAED, which is the definitive dictionary of the English language, the mistake was very natural, as the resulting sense was much more obviously appropriate than that of good tidings for a word which was chiefly known as the name of the sacred book or a portion of the liturgy. So that appears to be the only connection between good and God. Moving on to our memory verse from Psalm 136.1. I will read it slowly and then I will read it piece by piece giving the translation and then I will read it slowly again. You know almost the entire alphabet now. I'm sure that you can follow along. Hodu, Yehovah, Ki, Tov, Ki, Le'olam, Chasto. Hodu, give thanks, Yehovah to Jehovah, Yehovah. Ki, because, Tov, he is good. Ki, because. Leolam until forever, chasto, his loving kindness, his mercy. Hodu, le Yehovah, ki tov, ki leolam, chasto. And perhaps you know a little song with those lyrics. Okay, we're getting very close to the end. Until next time, tasimata inayim al hashamayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.